Good evening, church. Thanks for coming. You're welcome in the presence of God. Uh, let's pray before we start the message. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence to the Lord. Thank you that you gave this time to come together and just listen to your word. Lord, we thank you. We cover each other. We are brother and sister, our church, our congregation, myself, the Lord, Pastor Paul, and everyone else, the Lord Jesus. Father, we covered under your blood of Jesus. We covered this message through your precious blood of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that no weapon formed against this word shall prosper in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. Holy Spirit, you take complete control and lead us this our message. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. So today's message is very, um, we all know about the gospel, we all know about the preaching, we have done this, and uh, as a Christian, this is what we are supposed to do, and, um, but when Jesus was on this earth, he gave this, he gave this um, great commission to each and every one of us to preach the gospel. And when he was on the earth, he was walking, he was teaching, preaching. He was he was doing what his father told him to do. So let's go into the world. In Luke chapter 4, 18 says, when Jesus was baptized, he was age of 30, and he started his ministry um, from his own church, from his uh, church where he born, where he raised, synagogue, and uh, as soon as he baptized, he went to preach uh, to the church. And uh, the first uh, word he preached is, Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter 4, 14 says, Matthew, uh, Luke chapter 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover of sight of the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So that's what he's, uh, one of the commands he's, he was doing when he was alone, when he was an earth. So if the Jesus following what the Father, his Father commanded to preach the gospel, to teach and the deliverance and the, uh, you know, the sicknesses and everything. He was healing and he was preaching, he was teaching. And when he was doing that, you know, the, his disciple was following him. And there was, there was learning so much from him as well. Matthew 4, 3, 23 as well says, Let's see Matthew chapter 4.23. When Jesus went throughout the Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, so he was teaching in their synagogues where he, he was around that synagogue where he, he literally, uh, he was uh, raised, uh, or his uh, childhood maybe gone into that area, as you know, the hometown, and preaching the good news of kingdom and the healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about his spread all over the Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, though suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, and having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. He healed them all. Large crowds was Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region of course the Jordan followed him. So this is what Jesus was doing when he was on earth. He was healing the sick. And that's what people needed that time. You know, because there was so much suffering. Um, and when they saw this man is healing, healing everyone, they were just started to follow him without any question. Some, they, they do question, but again, you know, what he does as a miraculous signs and wonders, they had to think that this man is not an ordinary, ordinary man. He is from God, definitely. So some raised voice against him and some they didn't. So today we were just talking about the 
Uh, Jesus, his ministry, how he done, as we read the scriptures. He was walking with the authority. And uh, then the second, we will see the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what the, uh, he gave us the uh, great commission. So we will see that uh, when Jesus was doing his ministry, he was going town and town on the street. And, uh, you know, we will see in the Matthew chapter 7, he was following, uh, the, the people was following him wherever they go. And he was teaching them in a uh, Mount of, uh, Mount of, uh, that uh, is uh, his teaching is one of the famous in the Bible. So people was really learning from him and they was amazed that he, what he has that knowledge, what he had that wisdom from God, they were so amazed. So this is what the Jesus done. And we, we just, as a Christian, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad that this church is based, is foundation, this LSC church, London Shepherd Church, is a foundation, the base of the preaching the gospel. Winning the soul, that is a foundation, that's a, that's a commission they follow this church. So every, each and every Christians, each and every believers, each and every our brother and sister who know Jesus Christ, they need to preach the gospel. They need to share their word, they share their faith, not to be afraid of anything. The, the community, maybe the legal, you know, the doctors and nurses, sometimes they don't have a that authority or that because of the legal things they don't need to you know share their faith in the workplaces but still they can pray for in their heart for the people mm -hmm. because jesus our god hears the prayers he knows sometimes we cannot share the gospel for certain places but in that places also god put some people there for some reason like people who lives in the dark places, who goes in a, in a places that we cannot go, we cannot reach, you know, those areas, the dark areas, we cannot reach them, but some, still, God chooses some people to, to, to go in that places and preach the gospel. That's a beauty, that's a beauty of Jesus Christ. He, he raised people from whoever their background, whatever their background is, the sinners, they, they lost their hope, the addiction, the drug addict, and maybe they have so much bondages in their life, the chains, maybe they are in prisons, you know. So God chooses those people and then started to work in their life and then he will use those people in those areas because you know what Jesus is, the God. He created this earth from nothing to something beautiful. So he has that author power. He can do it for us as well. So this is what uh, we just believe in Jesus. Wherever we go, we just talk about Lord. Talk about our faith. And God just blesses those people. He said, you're, you're, uh, who's doing this uh, gospel? They're wearing the beautiful shoes. So this is the word, beauty of uh, sharing the gospel. The one, when one soul wins, we will win one soul. There is a celebration in the heaven. I don't think any anywhere much Bible declares that the celebration they do in many places. But but when the one souls come to the kingdom of God, they said they rejoice. Heaven rejoice. So what is beautiful is that the heaven rejoice. The God and and His uh, angels rejoice as soon as one soul repent. Well, as soon as one soul say. Okay, Lord is my Savior and my Messiah. And uh, yeah, that's it. And he's been saved. All he had to do is to believe. Believe in Jesus, what he done on the cross. Believe in Jesus when he was doing healing. Some people still think so. That time, 2,000 or 500 years back, that time was healing and miracles was happens. Uh, not now, not in the churches anymore. But you know, there, you know, some churches in India are so a big, huge crusade, and the people get healed. So much millions, thousands, million people get healed, and they got delivered. So God is same doing today as well, what he done yesterday. Jesus never changed. He was yesterday the same, 
today also the same and the tomorrow also. He never changes. So believe in Jesus, what he has done. That's what we have to follow him, follow his footsteps. He said, when I go, I will give you my Holy Spirit to you. You know, in Joel chapter 2, 28, Jesus said, I will pour my spirit upon all the flesh and your sons and daughters will be prophesied. Your, your old man will dream dreams and young will see uh, visions, you know. This is what Jesus said and um, his promises never failed. We are in the end time. We are living in the end time. And very crucial time that we have this responsibility to take the gospel where people can't go. Like, you know, this uh, Nottingham Hill, the best example I can give just a two days before. You know, that place was so like, a, okay, people were so happy celebrating so much, but there was so much darkness in that place. People was having so much drugs and uh, alcohol and uh, you know, sharing their body or showing their body. So it's good for them, but that's not good for the kingdom of God. And then our church went there, the member of those God's people, we went there and we just told them that you got to repent, you got to come to the God. And there, was, there wasn't a very bad anything, they were just smiling. They didn't really stop us anywhere, all the police was, all the anybody, they didn't stop us. In fact, they was taking pictures in that area as well. So the gospel we need to preach no matter what. So when we are doing that, the God is pleases us. So now we will see the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is actually, what, what is the gospel? We, we know as a believer, we know why Jesus came, why the sin entered. Let's talk about that to the people who don't know that. And uh, because of this Facebook, those people who don't know, they may be watching us from the other countries, maybe from India. Like I came from India, Hindu background. I had no idea about the gospel. Yeah. All I, I know is someone, English people, they, they crossed Jesus and he died. That's all I know. This is what I came from, that belief I had. So by this today, as a, as a, as a, I uh, had a Hindu background, very strong Hindu Indian uh, Hindu background. And um, if I believe now, you know, so whoever watching me, so they can, I pray that they will believe as well. So let's uh, look at the Genesis chapter 2, 17, here that Jesus said. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge and of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So this is what the sin entered. Jesus, Father God, he commanded Adam and Eve, do not eat that fruit of the tree. That is knowledge and the knowledge of good and evil. When you eat of that, you surely die. Surely. I mean, there is a second death. Surely, God said to them. And what they done? They disobeyed. They completely disobeyed God. And then what they've done is they lost their eternity. They lost their life in a heaven. And they had a second death, unfortunately, just because they disobeyed the God. And uh, we just look at the uh, Roman chapter 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through the man and death through the sin, and this way death came to all men because all are sinners. We all are sinners. And the death and the wages of sin is death. That's what the, the we was reading Genesis 2 17. Surely you will die. The wages of sin is death. And then we will see. The same Roman chapter 5 from 18 to 19. Con Just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all man, so also the result of all one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all man. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, you see. Just because of one man, Adam sinned, he disobeyed, and every man come from there, 
we all become sinners. So also through the obedience of the one man, the, the many will be made righteous. If you have to look at this word very carefully. Where was made sinners, so also through the one obedience, because of the Adam, he disobeyed him, he disobeyed him, and we all surely die, the, the God said. But if we obedient to one man who's righteous, we will be saved. That's what the second uh, uh, Roman chapter 5, 19 says. So when we understand this, where the sin came from, came from disobedience from one Adam, he disobeyed and the sin came. But if we obedient to the Jesus, he is a righteous saint from God, we will be saved. And Jesus died for sins, for, of, uh, for once, for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. So he died once for everything he done it once, you know, for everybody. For unrighteous to bring to you to God. First Peter 3, 18 says, All humans stand condemned before God. Our sins separate us from him because he is holiness and he's perfect. Why we are separated? Because of the sin. When sin enter, we not holy anymore. We not righteous anymore. And our God is righteous God, He justice God. He's seated on the righteous uh, throne of justice. His foundation is the righteous and justice. He's holy of holy. So when we enter that scene, we, we separated. God said, no, I can't see you anymore. You have to be away from my presence. You know? And Jesus was, and then God, because he created this world, and the, again, the John chapter 3, 16, this is a very uh, famous verse in the Bible say, you know, I love, gee, God loved the world so much that he gave his begotten son to die for us. And whoever believes in him, they will live but not die. So Jesus was the, is the righteous man, righteous God. He had to take this fleshly body to shed his blood. If we see in the Old Testament, because the sinners used to bring the buffaloes or, or, or pigeon, pigeons and everything, the animals to give the sacrifice for their sins. And when they was doing that in, in a Leviticus, we will see so many that scripture it shows that people were bringing the sacrification of the animals and God said that's enough is enough. I don't want this sacrifice anymore. I don't want this blood anymore. He was hated this. Who was going on in there? He was hated. And then he said obedience is better than sacrifice. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. Which obedience is talking about? God talking about believe in Jesus. Be obedient to what he said. Believe in him and you shall be saved. You don't need a sacrifice. You don't need the blood of animal. I had enough. He had enough. God says, stop. I'm sending you my son. And when Jesus came on the earth, he was such a righteous. No, no sin at all in his life. Or he was such a walking with the righteous because he's a man, a child of God. He was a son of God. He was walking with his authority. And he knows why he came on this earth. He knows God's purpose for his life. He knows the Father God, he has a purpose for his life. That's why he came to fulfill that. He came to die on the cross for our sins so we can be saved. That is the Heavenly Father's purpose. That was he sent his begotten son for us. And when we accept him as a Lord and our savior in our heart and believe him that he is die for us on a cross, he rose again on a third day, he is the son of God and we will be saved we, God doesn't need any more uh, like uh, in other religions, you know when we talk about the Hindu there is a lot of religions, you know, Hindus Muslim, you have to wash your feet you have to wash your hands, Hindus oh, you have to take your sleepers out if the woman has a monthly period, she cannot enter the temple, that's what the rules are and all the people just following the rules and rules and rules. 
But Jesus said, stop everything. Just believe in me. Be obedient to what he said. And you shall be saved. This is the gospel. Good things. We always need to, and everybody need to listen that. I'm glad that I, I understand this uh, news and uh, I, I experience God's power in my life, my, my family's life. So, Jesus began to preach the kingdom of heaven. He said in Matthew 4, 17, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near, you see, repent. That was his first preaching, repent. First he went the, in a synagogue, he went and he said that he is, uh, God sent him uh, to, the, to the bring the captivity free. And then he said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. So whenever we go on the, uh, on the street, I know people that don't like to listen that because they think they're not a sinner. They think they are, they are good people. They don't do any sin. They don't murder. They don't do any robberies. You know, that, that's what they think. And they think they are, they are not sinners. So why are you calling us to repent? They're not happy with that. But I tell you what. I tell you what. You know, even the little sin, even the Jesus said, you don't do adultery from your hand, but if you're looking at your eyes and your eyes, lusting eyes, if you're looking at woman, you have done already adultery in your heart. Jesus just raised the banner of, uh, you know, about this righteousness a little bit more up. So, we are all sinners. That's what the Jesus tried to say. We, he not tried to condemn us, but he tried to say that we all sinners and we all need a we all need a, a God, a, God the Savior for our soul. If we say we are righteous, I haven't got any sin in my in my uh, life or my my body, or I'm not doing anything. I'm not uh, you know touching anything. No, we are all sinners. We have to accept that, and then we have to repent. We have to repent. We have to literally repent to God. Say, look. I am sinner, I accept that, I lied yesterday, I, I done this and that, just repent and ask God for forgiveness. Our God is a God of forgiveness, He forgives. That's what the Bible says, you know, He is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. When we confess our sins, don't hide the sins. Do not hide our sins. That's a big thing, you know. If we hide, we think if we don't repent on that one, God doesn't know anything. We are okay, but no, God sees everything. He sees His eyes on everywhere, you know, in the in the seas, under the sea, uh, in the darkness, in the light. He can see everything, even our thoughts. Before we speak, He knows our thoughts. Before we even even thoughts, He knows what we're going to think. Before we speak, He knows what we're going to speak. So He knows. So all He knows. So. Why should we hide? And where are we going to go from His presence? He's everywhere. So better we to repent and live and, and be, uh, be peaceful, be peaceful with the God, you know. So this is what the Jesus uh, command. One is the, when He was preaching, He said, repent. The kingdom of heaven is near. And when we follow Him, we will follow His command as well. The great commission. The Great Commission is when he was descended to the heaven before that, he said to his disciples, he bring the disciples and he said, Mark chapter 16, we will read now. go into all world and preach the good news to all creation whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and these signs will accompany those who believe you see he said go into the old world and preach the good news to the old creation creation means go to the go to the cities countries go to the different people this is his creation he's talking about whoever believes is baptized will be uh, 
and is baptized will be saved. Not only believes, he's saying that you got to baptize as well to those people. They will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned, you see. Sometimes people believe and sometimes they think, okay, sometimes, uh, like in the Bible said, you know, when uh, when they heard the word of God, when they heard the gospel, sometimes they heard, they believe, and then the, 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 they will come and take it from their heart, like a, uh, like a uh, seed, you know. So we, we have to pray as a Christian for those people, whoever listening the gospel. Let this word go on their good heart of soil, you know, good soil, good heart soil, so that they will have no, uh, you know, to touch that word. So they will believe that and, and strong and believe in the rooted, mm -hmm. they will be, when they heard the gospel. And these signs will accompany and who believes in my name, they will drive out demons. Mm -hmm. They will speak in new tongues, you see. New tongues, speaking tongues. This is also the different topic, you know. This is when we cry out the demons. We have to have that authority. Matthew chapter 18, 18 said, when we bind on the earth, we bound in the heaven. When we lose on the earth, we lose on the he uh, uh, heaven. And Luke chapter 10, 19 said, we will have authority to uh, to trample over the serpent and scorpions and the old the dark power. We, we had that authority. The demon will not go if we don't believe in Jesus. If we believe in Jesus, and by that we stand on his name as well. By his name we can cast out the demons. And we will speak a new heavenly uh, tongues, language. And that will that will grow in our spirit. That we will grow in our spirit when we speak in new language tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on sick people and they will get healed see when we when we have this jesus in our life when we believe in jesus we do all have to do is have belief have faith that's what the word says you lay down your hands upon sick people and they get healed have that faith uh, after Lord Jesus has spoken to them and he was taken into heaven, he sat at the right hand of God. After that, spoken to this, give, him, give, uh, give his disciple this commission, this great commission to his, his uh, disciple. And then what happened? He lifted up in the heaven. He called his disciple, look, I'm going now. This is what I'm going to tell you to do when I'm going here. From here, so he told them this great commission, and he lifted up in heaven. Then the disciple went out and preached everywhere. Then the the disciple they really obeyed him. You know, they they took that uh, great commission with them, and they went and they preached the gospel. They was healing the sick. They was casting out the demons, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs, signs accompanied it. So this is what Jesus, when he, they obeyed him, they were doing signs and wonders, followed them, and they, the people can see. I wanted to add in here, when Jesus went, when they're doing these old signs and miracles, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is the one we need to do is Ask God to fill us with your Holy Spirit because He has promised Joel chapter 2 28. I will pour my spirit upon all the flesh. When we when we when we have that thirst for the Holy Spirit, and He will pour His Holy Spirit upon us. He just said, Ask, I will give you. You know, you don't need to be uh, saying that, oh, I don't need a Holy Spirit. I can't I don't want to speak in tongues. If you want to be powerful Christians, not the lukewarm, you got to speak in tongues, you have to have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. then you will see the signs and wonders following. Because the Holy Spirit within us, He does the work, not we. Within us, is the when we speak in tongues, our spiritual growth, is, uh, our spiritual life is growing inside. Because we talk to the Heavenly Father without knowing. 
So this is what the, when we have these four commissions, a great commission from God, Jesus, they followed, his disciple followed him, followed, the, followed what he said, and then they turned the signs and wonder. So what is the great uh, commission? What, what actually we were uh, looking in this one? Uh, let me explain more. Preach the gospel to all the nation. This is one. Sign and wonders follows healing and uh, casting out demons. First is preach the gospel to the all the nations and people. And second is healing and signs and wonders will follow. Deliverance. Baptize who believes. We need to baptize. We don't want to leave them just like, okay, they've done the sinner's prayer and they, okay, he came to the kingdom of God. Yes, he saved. But what Jesus gave us a uh, great commission, he said, baptize people who believe. So we need to baptize people as well. Disciple those who receive Christ. And who receive the Christ, who've been baptized, who, who believe in Jesus. And we just had to disciple them. Discipling means teach them more yeah, about Jesus. Yeah, Get them ready. Let them, let them have that understanding. They can do these things. Disciple, how Jesus was with this, uh, his uh, disciples and teaching, they was following him. We need to do those people who believe in Jesus, who's been baptized. We, we want to encourage them to be a disciple, to, to follow our Jesus. When I, this morning, when I was uh, uh, praying and I was asking God, you know, Lord, this message, you know, uh, and just give me more about this message. So, my Holy Spirit led me to the Jonah and the word that Jesus God said to Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amitabh, go to great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. So when I was reading his whole chapter today, I read Jonah and I was just so amazed how, how God was uh, dealing with the Jonah as well as a as a person, he was he was afraid, he was scared, he was uh, very discouraged, he was running from his calling, he was trying to hide from God. He knows what he is supposed to do and he was still running, but you know what Jesus, God himself still called on to him and he showed God, showed him that you don't need to run from me, where are you going to run from me? I'm there, even the deep sea ocean i am there and uh, you know in end jonah had to bow down and he said okay i will follow what you are saying i will obedient to your word and i was just looking at jonah's um, jonah's life and what how the person he was and i was just so amazed like he was just an ordinary person like you and me <laughs> nothing he wasn't really um, special like oh he's very strong and you know uh, this no, it's just uh, like you and me. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we get fear. Sometimes we do feel like that. But but again, when we see the Jonah, we fulfill the God's calling. It's better to fulfill God's calling. And God blessed him, and He used God used him a lot in the, in this uh, chapter when we was reading. So yeah, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. So in the world there are so many wickedness, so many dark dark cities, and why we are looking uh, other countries, looking our London, where we are UK, you know, what we see, uh, what we hear, is, is a lot of things that we need to pray for that. You know, like the people need to uh, stay away from their sins, wickedness, and we need to pray, we need to bow down, cry out for this city and other cities as well. So, uh, yeah, this is the message uh, that we uh, are seeing today. Jesus done his ministry, how he done, and the gospel of Jesus Christ, and his great commission. So, Lord, thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for everything you have uh, Speak to us, Lord Jesus, and spoke to us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. We cover this word. Whoever listening uh, here or in our social media, Lord, you touch them. Let this word 
goes in their heart in good soil Lord, and uh, let them come to the Lord uh, and let them repent their sins and uh, let them give their life to you Lord Jesus and uh, thank you for the Holy Spirit that you took complete control of this message we praise you and we honor you we thank you Lord in Jesus mighty name Amen Amen